Hi there, welcome back to Tyranny. It's Judgment Day and we are the law. The law has just uh, killed Pelox Florian, an enemy of Kairos. He didn't want to surrender. <laughs> How unfortunate for him. We'll have to talk with our uh, local disfavored friend Barik about this. You look as if you have something on your mind. By all means. Placing his weapon to his side, Barik salutes you. The joints of his armor grow what in can protest. I do for you? Uh, let's discuss some immediate concerns. What is it you have on your mind? What do you think of our travel companions? I'm more accustomed to traveling in the company of soldiers, so I'm out of practice judging the worth of civilians and miscreants. If you had anyone particular in mind, I'll give them some thought. What do you think of Landry? I do not know how many years he's walked the face of Teratus, but he clearly knows more than he claims to. Since he claims to know a great deal indeed, there's no limit to what he could be holding back. And what do you think of Verse? I try not to. She's a force of chaos, an agent of the voices of Narad. Taking her into our confidence can only lead to ruin. And yet she's a capable fighter. For the time being, I'm confident that you can trust her to serve your interests and rely on her skills on the battlefield. She may even offer some useful perspective on the war. Farewell. Thank you, Barak. Now let's plunder. What does he have? Wendrian Guard Heavy Bronze Gauntlets and a potion of Elemental Barrier. All these potions. I'm used to selling them Money. always from my previous plays of role-playing games like in Baldur's Gate. I would do that all the time. In Pillars of Eternity I would do that all the time, but now... Hmm, I don't think so. Insects flutter around and land on a few pieces of rotten vegetables, interspersed amongst the produce. On the lookout. Maybe there's something hidden here as well. Let's let's find out. Wow, look at that! That the tenderizer. Is that a that's a fine hammer, and that a stubbed iron gorget, an accessory. That would be probably would be nice for Barik, but he cannot wear anything I think or I mean it's an accessory let's see it would be here right the studded iron gold that would be that would fit him well right <laughs> <laughs> give him parrying too we have two accessories as well tenacity and haste I mean haste wouldn't be that good but yeah let's let's give Barak that thing that's really good I think the tenderizer a one-handed bronze axe hmm. how much DPS 3.3 hmm. yeah let's give him that thing should be good these axes I mean what no it's, it's not a I mean it's not an axe an axe right this hammer is best handled during moments of desperation and confusion and blood loss bring about a second wind of energy allowing the wielder to swing tenderizer with wild abandon really oh it has praying 0.5% bonus damage for every 1% missing health all right but it's it's better overall without that even so we're good here let's see and how could we miss these these two archers i mean we have looked at the whole area right and also uh, i'm not sure as about Yeah, there's some kind of enemy here, right? Moving cautiously. Honor guards. Look at them, they are approaching us. 
There's Barik, there's us. Who are these guys? They're running. They probably have killed our friends here. Fake Limp and his minions. Hmm. Striking Iron. Should we do that? Definitely should do that. We have the law. The law is with us. I'll do it for the law. The, the bastards have taken Florian. Kill them. Running in with execute. And yeah, you can strike iron here. Greater renewal is a good thing. And we should maybe... Uh, can't you... Uh, how to stop an ability. That's That would be very helpful. If we knew that. Ah, we have stopped it now. Let's see. Want to have her with a bow and this burning iron arrow. Shield slam. Nice. Good renewal. Lantry, yeah. Give Barik the Titan's touch. Barry got a level up. Yeah, we'll give him whatever is needed. Uh, more accuracy, maybe? No, more spell strength. Come on. Give him the spell strength. Preservation. What else can he do? I mean, we're here. Erase the record. Preservation seal on an ally. Oh, that's cool. Gifted healer 2. Mm, second breath revives a fallen comrade. That's good too. But well, let's go for erase the record. I want him to be able to heal. Very well. Protected by Lantry. Yeah. Let's actually give us the restoring touch first and then protect more. Well, Sunder. He's under attack. Yeah, the level up bonus. Pretty good. He can go for erase the record on himself. Definitely, because, yeah, we can go for Quicken. Yes, he should he should do that on himself. And Verse, yeah, she should attack. Should continue to attack. We have Striking Iron. And we'll thrust in. Casting Bastion, can we stop that somehow? Maybe with a quill strike. I Come like on, that. quill strike. I'm injured. But he has that uh, thing on him right now. Titan's touch. Uh, kill that guy. <laughs> Need to kill that guy. Uh, quicken. Quicken would be nice, right? Let's do the quicken. Ah, killed him. Nice. Waiting on Lantry. Yeah, we've got one down. Now only ranged people are left here. <coughs> we'll save Lantry. Oh, we're poisoned too. Should give us the Titan's touch as, as well. Can. 
run in here. Oh god, Lantry, you're always going down. That's not good. And we're going down as well. Thank god we have Barrick. <laughs> Thank god we've got Barrick. Not a problem, boss. Bam. Burning. Nice. Barrick is striking iron. And next. Oh, this is too easy. These two guys. I mean, we've done it. It's really good. And they have also cool abilities. They can shoot through us. That's really good. Let's go for striking iron again. We've eliminated the reinforcements and we should definitely rest here because we have so many wounds. Look at that. I mean, Barrick has no wound. He's just a monster. Let's rest. It's dangerous. Oh, out. Because I suspect <coughs> that our friends here may be our enemies, our next ones. This guy will probably kill us. Let's talk. Hey there. You killed him. He grits his teeth and glares at you. Are you daft? Fifth Eye said we can kill any of them except Florian. Uh, I tried my best, but he didn't seem to like the chorus much. And you should have argued harder or knocked him over the head. Carried him against his will. Fatebinder, is this really your first abduction? Not sure I like the tone of your voice. Not sure I like the tone of your face. Fake limp sighs. Well, I guess it doesn't matter now anyway. I'll have to report this unfortunate turn of events to the voices of Nerad in person. Hopefully ridding this wilderness of the Oathbreaker nuisance will be enough to save my own face. Now get out of here. Don't you have other fates to bind or something of that sort? Hmm. I have nothing further to say to you, Fatebinder. Leave me for now. Well, justice has been done. That's enough. I mean, it was not optimal, maybe, but... It was enough. They could have helped, I mean... What can I say? <laughs> so, maybe we can... Maybe we can actually look at... The journey... Journal? I mean, the Earthshaker reinforcements. We can report to the disfavored camp now. Forgebound iron, not yet. <coughs> so our way is to the disfavored camp. Mm, I like this day and night on the map as well. Let's see what we'll find out in the disfavored camp and what they are saying about the Earthshakers. Oh, we're getting something for it. Hey, you, Sterling Hagnan. This is locked. Can unlock it now. Oh, look at that. Magician's Mantle. We'll take that stuff. Like to see your wares. We need two camping supplies. And we'll give you all kinds of crap we found. <laughs> uh, yeah, the cash loot. Iron Walker Helm, Hero's Insignia. 
nice stuff, but we'll save up our stuff. Subterfuge, always rising. What are we doing here? I mean, we're unlocking stuff. Sivius was it, right? Go back and talk to him about the Earth Shakers. All due respect, our cohorts have proven themselves against these Apex fools time and time again. What can your Earth Shakers do other than get in the way? I don't want to be here, Sivius, and my orders don't involve proving our value to you. If the Great General doesn't want magic on his side, then he can order us to stand down and sit this one out. I'll Marshal Arrhenius. I don't question what your mages bring to the table, Hellspar, but I have my reservations about your leaders. Why couldn't Radix show up to the siege himself if he has more pressing issues than the state of the conquest? I should like to hear about it from his mouth. If Radix is not inclined to help, perhaps the next of kin might take his place. I hate to upset the chain of command during a time of war. Perhaps Radix's brother can convince him to remember his duty, Fate Binder. I thank you for the part you played. You didn't have to risk yourself, but you did so all the same. Very nice, very nice. And um, about the other stuff, maybe let's have a talk with Graven Ash again. <coughs> let's see. Hey there, Graven. How are you doing? Yarkin of War lets out a long sigh as he surveys the maps and models splayed about his desk. He glances over his shoulder, making brief eye contact with you, furrows his brow, and turns back to his contemplation. The missive said the Stormcaller was coming. Seems I was a fool to think you'd bring an edict that would pulverize and punish the Oathbreakers. Bow to the Archon. May we speak a moment? I do not have much patience left for words, but I will not turn away an honored friend. You have been our trusted ally in the court since the early days of the conquest. The least I can do is spare you a moment of my time. What is on your mind? First, the re your regiment here in Wendrian's Wall is small, even by disfavored standards. This conquest has spread us thin. Every league we conquer must be held. I issued the call to assembly, but most of the cohorts remained trapped across the mountains. No bother won't be the first time I've had to do much with a little. And I need to know why conquering a few lowly tearsmen is so impossible to task. The Archon lets out a long sigh, glaring at you with a furrowed brow. It's not for lack of trying. Earlier in the year, when the chorus were still gathering to the valley, I launched a raiding party to head straight to the citadel. They never made it past the Mantani River. With no disfavored survivors and no chorus scouts with eyes on the situation, I know very little of what occurred, only that they died quickly. That left me shorthanded and in need of more troops, and they've been slowly trickling in from everywhere, and I guess I've been guilty of waiting for my numbers to be overwhelming instead of merely enough. Hmm. What became of the warriors who left to garrison this region years ago? I too have questions about that. The Archon inhales sharply, his posture becoming defensive, his cold blue eyes stare at you with an unblinking intensity. I have reason to believe that when the garrison was taken the disfavored were slain not by the Oathbreakers. And though I know it, my bones in, it, in my bones, I cannot prove the voices of Nerat is at fault. Well, what's your reason to believe such a thing? It is well known that I can protect my soldiers from harm, even if they are beyond my sight. What is less known is that I sense every cut, every kill, every illness, no harm to my soldiers escapes my notice. Of the warriors posted at the Vendrian's Well Citadel, only two were slain in the uprising, but a few others died later and horrible, painful magic was involved. 
my son, was one of those who died under such unusual circumstances. Your son was among those killed? Yes, my son Brennix was posted with a garrison, but I felt his death happen elsewhere after the battle. But all in my legion are family. That he is of my flesh must remain irrelevant. If this is true, the Archon of Justice must be informed. No, no, I will make no claim. I cannot handedly prove. I appreciate your sense of duty, but not yet. Let's speak of something else. What can you tell me of Cairn, the late Archon of Stone we are up against? I should have known sooner his heart strayed from Kairos. I needed to split our forces, sent him to Asur, while I tackled Stalwart, but that was a mistake. Without me looming near, he must have felt free to live out his traitorous dreams. What has become of Cairn's disciples? The Earthshakers. Cairn's chief disciple, Radix, now speaks for the guild. It is true that my warriors are a bit apprehensive about our magical allies. Many suspect Cairn's treachery was taught to them. But I have wetted the guild, pruned whom I don't trust, kept those I can. Why do you think he turned against Kairos? Cairn only served us because death was the alternative. He did not admire the unity and the progress that Kairos brings. While I suspect Chorus agents may have whispered treachery in Cairn's ear, I think it wholly possible Cairn fell into disloyalty by his own volition. Let's speak of something else. Your distrust of the voices of Narad is plain as day. How did this antipathy begin? Our rivalry is an old one. The voices of Narad served Kairos before I did, and I believe he hates me for being of roughly the same status in the eyes of the Overlord, despite being the younger Archon selected to lead an army through the tears. The Archon furrows his brow, grumbling softly as he stares. This war seems to have brought out the worst in us. We've disagreed on strategy at every turn. You think his madness is something as trivial as envy? That's a bit self-absorbed. Mm, I don't know. Should we criticize him? Probably not. He, he seems like a, a correct guy. I think you're right to be wary of the voices of Narad. I'm glad you concur, for I feel my paranoia around him is somewhat justified. And that's all. For the glory of Kairos, the Archon of War taps the haft of his mole to the ground for emphasis and turns back to his maps. Can we look at something here? Can we take that? <laughs> Got it. Seems like Iron Walker Helm. Yeah, let's let's take everything. It seems like this is allowed, so it's not against the law. This battle report from Echo Call Crossing blames the failure of the assault on the village on the Scarlet Chorus, apparently their scouts failed to report critical intelligence about the enemy composition. Wow, grave things are going on here. Murder inside the army. I mean, it would be typical, right? Men whose profession it is to kill, put together and not understanding each other, not liking each other. Yeah, we can imagine what happens there. So. I'd say for now, thank you for watching. Happy gaming to you. In the next episode, we'll probably go to Echo Call Crossing and try to find out what happened there. And uh, it will be another judgment day, and we are the law. Happy gaming to you, and see you in the next episode.